Okay, so that's the end of this problem. Uh, hi, Professor. Uh, yeah. Can you go back to the page number 74? Thirty-four? No, no, seventy-four. Yes, two, three pages before. Seventy-four. Yeah, over here. So the term with the X, uh, MB over EI, C, L, C. Uh, when it goes to the right hand side, shouldn't it be negative? Or. Mm. Or is there any negative, like we made some sign convention mistakes? Uh, because I saw the book, uh, it's positive on the right hand side, so. Mm -hmm. Well, we can take a look. So basically, this MB over EI, CLC is the, the shear, right? And mm -hmm. the BA term, which is on the, going on the left hand side, that is making anti-clockwise moment so yes it will be negative on the first in the first equation above it and when we multiply it with negative sign on the both side by dividing ei then we get the positive over here but mm -hmm. but when we switch so, to the right hand side it will be negative uh, no if you look at here let's check the signs the first one is positive internal moment as negative EI, Y double prime. So the first one is front by definition. So this yeah. one was by definition, you don't have to be bothered with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the moment produced by this P plus MB over LB, and this is the vertical force. So you certainly will produce negative moment. So this negative sign is correct, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And the next one is the shear force which is this MB over LC. This one here times X, right? And that is, yeah. we're talking about this horizontal force pointing to the left. Yeah. That will also produce yeah. counterclockwise, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's also negative, right? Yeah. When you put the EI definition of internal moment, which is negative EI, C times Y double prime, it comes with a negative sign. So that's why I convert everything from negative sign to be positive sign that you get this plus the MB. Yeah, but uh, right. on the bottom, so we uh, keep that MB over EIC, LC, mm. X to the right, right? At the final equation, the y double prime plus kc square y equals mm -hmm, to, mm. so over there it should be negative, right? Based on the previous equation, it should be negative over there. So basically, we wouldn't get a negative on the second phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we can continue discussing this one, but um, besides this one, anybody has other questions? Because I will let I would like to let the rest of the class go first. Hey, Professor, can I see the bottom of page 76 for a second? Bottom of 76. Okay, and any other questions? If not, uh, we'll, we'll come back. 74. What's that? Still on page 74. Uh, do you need to see page 76? Yeah, just the bottom of it. Can you see that? Oh, you're not seeing it. So there's some uh, connection problem. Somehow it gets disconnected from time to time. And I still don't know why. One question on the displacement continuity conditions. Mm -hmm. So the on the first one where you say Y C, uh, so the deflection of the column at L C is equal to the deflection of the column at uh, for the beam, the deflection of the beam at zero. 
isn't YC a different direction than YB? Because your coordinate system is now rotating 90 degrees. We, uh, the answer is yes. We use our reference coordinate system to define YC and YB. For YC, we measure it from the bottom. For YB, we measure it from point B. And that is, let me see if I have the space here. That means this. Reference system is a measure like this. So one of them, this is YC, and this is YB, and this is X, of course. On the textbook, it further defines XC and XB. Mm -hmm. But the regions are different. And that's why for YC, when XC equals LB, that is the beginning of the beam. But if, so if there's a if there's a displacement at YC uh, of LB uh, or sorry y, YC LC uh, that's that displacement is left or right, but for the beam the displacement would be up or down. So how like if their values might be the same, but depending on, like, that doesn't necessarily mean there's continuity or mm -hmm, I'm just mm -hmm, confused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I, I see what you're saying. Yes. Correct, correct. And uh, this continuity boundary condition indicates that the displacement must be the same. But you made the valuable point here. Displacement has different components, right? What I meant be here should be the, I think that's the easy way to fix it is to call it the absolute value. That means no matter what component you're looking at, the absolute amplitude of this, because on the two dimensional plane, the displacement may have two different components, X and Y. So if I take the absolute value for both of them, you agree that the absolute value for the displacement at the point when they join together should be the same, right? But the X direction of that is not, uh, the displacement on the X direction is okay, uh, no. defined by the- Okay, uh, and now you don't understand what I'm trying to, to explain to you. A displacement in real space can be a vector and the vector can yeah. have multiple components. The meaning for the displacement continuity condition means that in space, when this point move from initial position to the final position, if you use one member to measure it versus use the other member to measure it, they have to show you the same displacement. And that displacement can be decomposed in different components. In the component level, I agree. One is perpendicular to the other, so you cannot say that the horizontal displacement equals the vertical displacement, I agree. But if you look at the absolute values, that means they could be a surface, they could be a vector, they could be a matrix. But if you look at the absolute value, no matter how they move, their displacement must join together. So that is the meaning by putting on this absolute sign. Before this absolute sign is put on these two terms, I agree that you cannot say that vertical equals to, to horizontal. That's true. Okay. But now we, the way we, the way we write it here is to consider them in a more general sense. They are not necessary to be a single value. They can be a vector. The point is their displacement. Once they move from the initial position to the final position, the final position must be the same. So that's the meaning for the displacement continuum. But uh, regardless of the uh, mathematical typo here, you do agree that the displacement must be the same, right? Yeah. I agree that there should be continuity, but uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm doing a good job explaining my question. Uh, if, those, if those values, let's say, are one, 
uh, if you can go back to your diagram, uh, Kopal. So if those values are one, uh, your uh, YB, let's say, could be here, but then uh, uh, in, in, in this, well, I guess, uh, so if, starting from this point, oh, well, with YB equals one, you get to, to over here, but with y to c equals one, you get to over here. No, that, like why, how is that? No, 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 no. Then do you notice where I mark these two points? Mm. They have different local references. They have different origins. Yeah. So when YC at X equals LC, that means this point. For YB, when XB equals zero, that means this point. Is that clear to you? Yeah, I, I understand. That's, that's yeah. the meaning of that expression. Okay. Like I, I, I understand that part. Uh, 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 like uh, I just yeah you know, I, I I'll try to think of an, another way to ask the question and I'll email you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's get back to uh, and for the rest of you, if you don't have any question, you can leave because I don't want to keep you any longer here. Okay. If you are interested in my explanation to uh, to tech, you can stay. So let's figure this out. Why we don't get this expression? Why we get the expression different from the one on the textbook? So here. Let's take the, uh, the coordinate system that we have before, which is the one here. Here I actually use the one from the top, but uh, for member AB, because I mentioned to you that the coordinate system actually, if we take the coordinate system from here, And that's, that's actually what the textbook used, which may actually eventually lead to the, the change of the signs for the moments. So we'll see if we can arrive at that. We have two different quantum systems. This is YC, this is XC. We just use X because there's really no need to confuse us. Right? So professor, oh. can I say something? What's that? Uh, can I say something? Yeah. I, I, know, I know what Dick's talking about. So when you move M, B, E, uh, the E, I, C, L, C, multiplied by X to the other side. You I, should, I, I, you I should. know what he was talking about. Yeah. I know, I know what he's talking about. Okay. But okay. the problem is not that I don't understand the sign change. The problem is I, I why would arrive that, that that is the question. Why is not the sign would change? No, that's not the question. The question is why the sign would change. That's what we're trying to uh, figure out here. Okay. okay. Can I stay? I'm, I'm staying for Of course, you. of course. Okay. You're free to stay. But I'm just, well, I don't want to, to keep other students. If you're not interested, you can leave. But I'm just okay. trying to figure this out with, with tech here. So let's consider that uh, the forces that we have, which is this one. Uh, make sure we copy everything right. Which is P plus MB over LB. So this is one term. And we also have the horizontal shear, which is the VA, this one here. And we know that this equals to MB over LC, right? To balance it, you will have another shear here, which is VA. But by taking the moment at this point, you don't have to consider this one because it just passed this point. Right? Just like the one we cancel all this VA because it's right at the point you take the moment, so you don't have to consider it. And what else? Of course, internal moment. So let's not forget about internal moment. Internal moment is acting in this direction, right? 